The Australian Defence Department have once again increased Australia's military spending by almost $30 billion. The reason given is that there is a growing discomfort with China's military ambition. This will equate to a total defence capability of approximately $195 billion by 2020-21. Of course, China responded angrily. Expected expenses include 12 new submarines at a cost of more than $50 billion, or much higher if you include maintenance costs, 9 new anti-submarine warfare frigates, 12 offshore patrol vessels, 2 new fleets of Air Force drones, 75 joint strike fighters, helicopters for special forces, long-range rocket systems, as well as many others. Purpose of the military. As the name suggests, a defence force should be used solely to defend one's country. We all know, however, many defence forces around the world, US, Australia and the, U- and the UK, just to name a few, are not just using their forces to defend their territory, but instead sending their forces overseas to fight against some perceived threats, for example Saddam Hussein, Al-Qaeda, ISIS or any other organisation that the government liked to publicise at the time. I think most people would agree that we have the right to defend ourselves, but I think that's where the role of military should stop. Using the military to invade other countries is immoral. Sending troops into other lands to kill people is plain wrong. Sure, some of the people that are killed are truly evil individuals, but since when can we just go around bombing other sovereign countries because there are a few bad people there? There are bad people in every country, Australia included. Let's face it, Many people, if not most people, killed in war are not terrorists or enemy fighters. They're just normal people going about their everyday business. Unless you ignore the news, which probably is a good idea if you want to keep your sanity, every few weeks we hear of hospitals being bombed or markets being blown up. It's disgraceful that our leaders try to justify this by blaming the enemy for hiding in civilian locations. This would be equivalent to a police officer shooting at a criminal in a crowded shopping centre killing lots of bystanders, then blaming the criminal for all the civilian deaths. People simply would not accept that as an excuse. True Purpose of the Military So why do our governments keep our countries in a perpetual battle against evil? I think the main reason is power. Individual leaders and their ministers like to think they are superior. By having a large military at their disposal, they think they can go around showing other nations who's the boss. I truly think many leaders around the world suffer from megalomania. If they didn't, they probably would never have reached such a high rank in their government. It takes somebody who craves power to elevate themselves to the rank of president, prime minister or dear leader who is a perfect incarnation of the appearance that a leader should have. Bill, my neighbour, has no such desire to become a great leader of the country, and I think that is true of most people. Most people just want to live their lives without involving themselves in petty political squabbles. The next reason is money. During all the great wars of our era, economic activity drastically increased due to an increase in jobs and production, new soldiers, weaponry, vehicles, etc. Now that we don't have any more great wars, greedy governments have been going around starting wars. They've become addicted to the amount of money that can be had by fighting. It's not just the governments benefiting, it's all the private corporations that are making a mint from it all. Just take a look at all the defence contractors used by the US government. They've only listed the top 100 because there are so many of them. Another reason related to money is unemployment. Thanks to an increase in technological unemployment, as well as a general economic decline, lots of people have been losing their jobs. People who can't find work are much more willing to become soldiers and other low-skilled military personnel. It's possible the government see periods of unemployment as an opportunity to expand their military might. Of course, they advertise the increase in military to be beneficial for Australia and to show that they are creating jobs. I'm all for creating jobs, but can we create some jobs that don't require you to go to foreign lands and kill people? Australia has an all-volunteer military. People who are able to go to law school generally don't volunteer to become a rifleman, especially now that many soldiers are at risk of being sent to some overseas hellhole. If there was truly a threat to Australia, thousands of people would be signing up every day, but that's not the case. Instead, the government have to try to persuade people to go and fight some unjust war. Just take a look at the Australian Defence Force Jobs website. Look at all those smiling faces. What a great life they must have. Should I join the military? 
When I was in my 20s, I actually signed up for the military. It seemed like an easy option at the time. There were lots of colourful ads showing all the benefits of the military. Free doctors, free dentists, free food, lots of job opportunities. Luckily, I got a job offer elsewhere, so cancelled my Air Force application. So I don't blame people for wanting to sign up. There are lots of benefits, and the idea of defending one's country is a noble one. But the military is no longer just about defence. It's about going around sticking your nose in other countries' business. Of course, the individual troops cannot decide this. They have signed up for at least three years, so must do what the government tell them, or risk going to jail. Some Australian defence jobs have a minimum service period of 14 and a half years. I'm not joking. Here's the text from the pilot period of service. When you embark on a career as an Air Force pilot through ADFA, you'll be appointed for an initial minimum period of service, IMPS, of 14.5 years. Now that's a lot of bombing of foreign land that you could be forced to participate in. What can we do? The modern military is not what it used to be. If you think that by joining up you are somehow going to defend your country from harm, it's simply not true anymore. The military is used as a tool by the powers that be. They do not care about the individual members. They do not care if some of our soldiers are killed overseas. They only care about maintaining their power. The only way we can stop this war machine is to not join the armed forces. Of course, we can only do this as long as the military is voluntary. If enough of us decide to not join, eventually the government would reintroduce conscription or the draft, as it's commonly called. All I know, if the Australian government forced me to join, I'd be happy to stay in Australia and defend our sovereign soil. But if they wanted me to go overseas to, say, Iraq, Afghanistan or some disputed Chinese island, forget it. I'd rather go to prison.